Hey, how you going? I'm Scotty. Thanks for joining me in this tutorial. I'm going to be using the same method of sketching that I did in that last tutorial. So if you missed that one, it's uh, I'll link it down in the post below so you can check that out. Right, I explain in a lot more detail on how to how to sketch this scene. Where do we start with this? Uh, we need to set up the composition on the page. What we're doing here is outlining this box here. So I'm not trying to rush or make it too quick. And we'll come down on the side like this, uh, enjoying each line. So sometimes just watching the ink go down on the page. So that's our composition. And this point here, we can mark out about here. Helps to have a point there to work on. We've got that space here, this negative space, which is quite nice. And if we do, if we leave this blank at the bottom, it means that we can just see how low it goes. We don't have to commit to a certain size. And it's always good to mention perspective as well. So with this with this sketch here, you can see the roof here coming in like this. So it could be that the horizon line is somewhere here, considering that someone's taken the photo. So that means that these these lines here are coming down. So that, that helps to know that that's where one of the point of perspective is going. The other one, you can see how, how flat that roof is. But so all the all the ones on this plane are going to be, all the lines on this plane are going to be quite horizontal. Always good to consider the perspective just a little bit. But now we are looking for some main shapes. So I'm going to go around that balustrate or scaffolding and around that pole here. Down. I can see that's about halfway between there. So even if it wasn't right, you can change the building. This is a little chimney. And now that's when I was talking about that perspective of coming down here. Coming down here. And I'm taking my time. So now let's go across that top. Adding in any details if you see something there. Now let's work down to the next building, this one. So the top of this roof and down here. So maybe you can put a dot like that and it help, can help you aim. Comes down, it comes down a bit lower than this point, so I'm just matching that. Okay, and we have two buildings there. Okay, what's our next outline shapes? Now we've got this little bush here that we can do. So you can imagine the, the roof, or how about we draw the roof line here? Coming across, about there, and down. And that's that shape there. And now we can see that distance. It will estimate it a bit easier to that bush. Comes down here. Uh, and then that line there. So see how steep that line is? Let's just imagine that it's slightly at a, a lower angle. Down like that. Okay. If that corner's there, let's bring that corner down so we can see it. And this line goes straight across. You can actually people walking there. So you can go the silhouette of somebody. And then angle it up to there. This line. Up to there. And then across. And then back down. Right to here. Okay, that's really nice. Just fun to draw this kind of uh, these all these main shapes. Let's go down here, and then we go across. It's quite flat here. Now I'm just trying to think, how am I going to do this circle? And let's put a dot here, and in the middle of this straight part, a dot there. And then we'll be able to join those up. That distance there, if we bring it across, and a slight more there. Draw a line up to here, and then angle it back down here. Now let's draw this bit to here. I'm mimicking this. It should be almost like I copied that line across, but it would cut off there. We have a boat. So let's draw the boat. Can't see the rest of the boat, but I'm adding it in. I'm having a guess what it is. So this is this little cloth over the top. Okay, there's a pole here. I really, really like this, this boat here. So how can we make that more of a feature? 
we could actually bring it right out to here and it could look quite nice. What I'm going to do is draw this pole here and then let's outline this boat. Okay, and that's the front of the boat. It comes across like this. You can see it's quite flat to about there and then it bends up a bit. So go down and then across. Okay, and then we can add in those poles around it now. And this one across here, here, and on the other side of that ramp. My wife and I went to Venice. We, we really enjoyed when we came off the train, seeing all these amazing boats speeding past and the gondolas. And we weren't brave enough to, get, to go in a gondola, but we went on a few ferries to different islands. Very picturesque place. So, so the angle of that is nice up there, and then we can have some boats in this little section here. Okay, let's see, this should be right in the middle. And I'm just looking at that silhouette around the boat. So now I've got the silhouette, now I can break it into little smaller shapes. We can add some people on the bridge here. When I'm adding people, you can just break it down into those very simple shapes. The head, shoulders and then a tapered shape there and i'll start with the head of this taller person here you can just see the elbows like that let's sketch this detail across here so holding my pen lightly on the page comes around and then there's another detail here and around like this okay and we can bring some of these lines down from the building now because we've got the boats I go back up the top and let's start breaking down some of these main shapes. Once again, it's a lot easier than trying to tackle that straight away. So see this point here? Um, and we can go across. And then across. So just breaking down these shapes, this one here. Just use your elbow to move your whole arm like this. See that angle? Let's try and get the same, very similar angle. Might be slightly shallower angle. It's all following these lines to a point somewhere here. And then in the distance, we've got some great shapes that we could break down here. Same, following this angle. All these lines. So now, now what we can do, we've got the main shapes. We can go through and look at the details. You can see here, underneath the roof here, there's lots of little beams. And they'll be closer together here. And here we can do a double line and then do the same thing. So now we'll move up to this point and there's three little pillars here. That's, that's nice. When we did those main shapes it seemed quite simple. As we break down each section it starts to come alive and looks almost complex. That line there you can see and it also has little beams sticking out. Okay, so now this line here on the front, then this little window's here. Let's head in these details here. There's flowers on there, gee, really nice here. And we have a, a nice window back here. Do you think we could add another person here? I reckon that would be a good idea, since they're very easy to do. I drew the head and then I drew almost like a little bit of a hunchback and straight down from the chin. As we, as we go away, this window here is narrower, slightly narrower than, the, than this one. Let's go down and another, then this doorway here. Well, this, this wall here has a window coming here and I've got to follow the top of the window, follows that line. So let's draw that there like that. So I have to like breathe carefully and then this bottom one would be flatter because it's down here. Like a little port window. And then this top guardrail is white. And in this section here, I think I need a bit more detail. So I'll follow this line here. Little details here. Now this, is, it's nice now we can see because that's all the detail in there. We can see that shape here and here is uh, like mirroring each other. Now let's move to these buildings back here. Few windows in the background 
And then see all the details on this surface here can be just very impressionistic. Okay, so I've moved my watercolors into place and I've got a little paper towel. We're gonna to add, of course, a light wash. So this is cerulean, cerulean blue, loose strokes here, watercolor. Sorry, behind the line work. Next thing is burnt sienna, but we can mix with burnt sienna a bit of red. So I've got alizarin crimson, like this. And then as I go, you can add in a bit more red. So I'll do that again. That's the burnt sienna with a little bit of alizarin crimson in it. If this is a little bit less saturated on this side, and then it gets more saturated, so this is just something I'm working on, this, these little nice gradients. So I'm just trying to get a light burnt sienna start from here, and then I'm dragging it across. But then as I'm getting across, I can make it a little bit more saturated, and then we can add in that red. And not because it's matching the reference, just because I think that's a nice thing to do. Add some dots as well the water down here and that would be ultramarine so let's get ultramarine and you can see how dark the water is so we can add some Payne's gray into it so ultramarine and just a dab of Payne's gray now this orange building how are we going to do that well I have got some cadmium red which is an orange red and then let's start here with the cadmium red and as we go across and now if I get a Viridian green with a bit of Payne's grey dulling that down all those vines just there now we've got Payne's grey and we're going to add it into this blue the ultramarine so now it's it's more of a Payne's grey these sections there wherever this dark and we use a rose this is the rose, this is permanent rose. And I add a bit on this surface. And even add a bit here. And we have, we'll get the alizarin crimson again for the boat. We've got those, those seats, those red seats. And the people, see some red clothes on them. Now, because that's dry, we can add a bit of texture to things like the roof and the, the bridge there. And we'll get more of that burnt umber here. Just a little bit of Payne's Grey. Whoops. Let's go down here. And I'm not trying to get the whole pole, like, so leave some white on them. All right, so now when we go on to shadows, I like to use a mixture between um, ultramarine and purple. Okay, and we also have purple lake, so it's quite light and colorful. Now in terms of shadows, most of the shadows are happening around this area here. You can see there's a nice shadow in there. Some shadows there, and then it falls on top of this boat. It's running through the water here. Definitely the side of the boat here is in shadow. Okay, so in here, and there, and I'm assuming here too. Quite a light shadow there. Ultramarine, just in little spots there too. That will, that will dissipate into those purple shadows. So most of the darkness is around here, where that shadow is for the, for the bridge. It's a lizard and crimson, and then let's add some rose, and I'm adding it here to add texture to the side of the building there. The shadow, so that's purple lake again with ultramarine, and adding texture to the water in the sky. I've got to let that dry, and then we'll do the highlights. But this one I've got a Uniball Signo pen, which is a white pen that I've been using as well, and I'll see how that goes here. We want to make things stand out a bit more. Uh, might be lines here but through here there could be some nice white and thank you to all my patreon members who make it possible for me to create tutorials like this every week if you want to get the full version so that you can sketch along with the reference um, and all the extra detail and explanations that i put into as i'm sketching this you can check out my patreon there because i've got those full tutorials there with the references and many other tutorials there you can check out thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one